If you've been hearing about this thing, aphantasia, this inability to visualize, to see things in your mind's eye, and you've also noticed you don't have an inner voice. When you're reading, you don't hear a little internal monologue reading out the words, that you can't replay the latest song you've just heard. You can't remember and re-experience the smell of good coffee, the smell of rain on cement. This is something called multisensory aphantasia. So aphantasia can go beyond just the pure visual. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Joel Pearson, professor of cognitive neuroscience, and I'm here to tell you about multisensory aphantasia and some recent research we've done looking at all the different subgroups of aphantasia and multisensory aphantasia. So first up, a mini recap. If you're new to the channel, if you're new to aphantasia, let me tell you first what mental imagery is for some people. So when some people think about what an apple looks like, what anything looks like, they have a fleeting conscious sensory-like experience of what the apple is. This is absolutely not like holding an apple in your hand and looking at it. It's nowhere near as strong as that perceptual experience. If you do have imagery, you do have some kind of experience. It's fleeting. You might see the details, you might zoom in. Now, some people have a much stronger experience. I'm describing my experience just then. Some people say their experience is almost photo-like. They can replay a whole movie in their mind's eye. So aphantasia is a word recently given to this blind mind's eye. We've known about aphantasia for well over 100 years, but it's really been only in the last sort of handful of years that it's really been moved into the general uh, awareness through media, through new papers, new publications. So it turns out that aphantasia goes beyond the domain of vision. Just like our sensory experience of the world involves all the touch, smell, sounds of course, mental imagery, if you like, can also include all those senses. And hence, you can have all these different types or subtypes of aphantasia. So in a recent paper that we did in the, in the lab here, we sent out two different surveys, or you like, we sent out two different uh, questionnaires to two different groups. And this questionnaire looks at all the different uh, sensory domains of mental imagery, not just vision. So this is not looking at the visual vividness of visual imagery. It's looking at all the different senses about sound, taste, touch, so metasensory across the board. And everything I'm going to be talking about, we sort of replicated it. So we ran it in one group with a thousand participants, and then we ran it in another group with a thousand participants. Then what do we do? We got a number of different, what's called clustering algorithms. And this is sort of an automated algorithm based way of looking at the clustering, the grouping of the data. And there's lots of these different clustering algorithms. We did uh, use three different methods to do that. So the idea here is to see what are the natural groupings of people with aphantasia. For example, are they all just pure visual aphantasia? Are they all multisensory? Maybe they're all just pure smell aphantasia. And clustering analysis like this is a sort of non-biased way to look at the different natural groupings. So the job of the algorithm is to find which groups of people naturally cluster together and find nice ways of separating those without us bringing our bias as scientists onto the data. So what do we find? We found there are two main groups. No matter which clustering algorithm you use, there are two clear groups. And that is, of course, pure visual aphantasia. So that's aphantasia just localized, if you like, to the capacity of vision, visual information. And the other big group, which according to one of the clustering algorithms was almost half of those people we tested, was full multisensory aphantasia. So that's not being able to conjure up any sensory experience in any of the sensory domains. So not being able to uh, read out loud in your mind, not being able to replay your favorite tune, not being able to re-experience the taste of some yummy food or coffee or wine, um, but also touch, movement, extends to all the different sort of senses. So that's multi-sensory aphantasia. And it turns out that almost half of the people we tested of those 2000 had that multi-sensory aphantasia. So they're the two groups, pure visual and what's called multi-sensory aphantasia. Now, as you drill down in the data, we saw other groups, but very small groups. For example, one of the small groups was about 5% of the participants had what we call somatosensory 
intact. So they had aphantasia on all the other senses, except when it came to somatosensory, the internal sensations of their body, their feelings. If you feel hungry, full, you can describe as physical sensations, um, were intact, everything else gone. So they could imagine that internal feeling, that feeling of full, things related to their body. So that was about 5% of the populations we tested. Auditory intact, we saw in about 4% of the groups we tested. So again, that's aphantasia in all the other sensory domains, no visualization capacity, no smell, no taste, but auditory sounds was fairly normal. So we saw that in about 5% of the top populations we tested. So what's interesting here is as you drill down, you find very smaller and smaller groups of very specific uh, patterns of aphantasia. So as you get to 1% and below 1%, we did find these very small groups in sort of almost all the categories and all the um, having one sense of imagery, but not the others. So what does this tell us about aphantasia in general and this inability to visualize and how it relates to all the senses? Well, it paints a very interesting picture. It really tells us that it's really bespoke, that aphantasia is very bespoke and it's very different across different people. And so the general experience of this internal model of the world, the internal virtual reality simulator you have in your head is gonna be very different from one person to the next. One of the other really interesting things I found about this study was that there is no perceptual equivalent, if you think about it for a moment. So with imagery, you can be blind, if you like, across all the sensory domains. Does that ever happen in terms of perception? Can you think of anyone you've ever come across who is blind, deaf, cannot taste, uh, cannot smell, cannot feel in their skin? That just, I don't think that ever existed. So it tells us something that you can have full multisensory aphantasia, but you can't really have full multisensory sensory blindness or perceptual blindness. So this thing exists in the mind or with imagery, but not with perception. And that is a striking difference between perception and imagery. And that tells us something that's really fascinating, I think. What does it tell us? Why is it fascinating? Well, it suggests that imagery, these internal experiences are different to perception. They might be controlled by one overall arching factor, whereas perception, that's probably not the case to the degree it is with imagery. So whenever we find differences between imagery and perception, that's really interesting because it shows us how these systems are different in the brain, tells us more about aphantasia, more about understanding the condition, and potentially more about switching imagery on in people if that's what they want. Not everyone wants that. So which of these senses do you think you have? Do you not have? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Do you think you have full multisensory aphantasia? Or do you have a very unusual specific kind? I've heard things from people that say they can imagine everything, but they can't imagine faces, for example. We haven't had a chance to study that yet, but is there some very unusual form of aphantasia you think you might have? I would love to hear about it, and so would the, uh, the community. So, the others, so please share in the comments. We'd really appreciate that. So thanks for watching. Stay curious, stay imagery conscious. Keep trying to imagine. Represent the world in any way you can. Till next time, thanks.